The Russian River drains an area of over 1,485 square miles that is approximately 100 miles long and from 12 to 32 miles wide. Altitudes in the basin range from 4,480 feet to sea level. The principal tributaries of the Russian River are East Fork, Sulphur Creek, Makama Creek, Dry Creek, and Marquest Creek. The principal use of water in the basin is for the irrigation of agricultural land. Water is also used for municipal, domestic, and industrial purposes. Lake Sonoma was designed to provide a 212,000 acre feet of water supply storage and over 130,000 acre feet of flood control storage. The Pacific Gas and Electric Company annually diverts about 150,000 acre feet of the Eel River water into the East Fork Russian River through its Potter Valley Diversion Tunnel and Power Plant. It is estimated that there are presently over 600 diversions by various entities along the mainstream of the Russian River and approximately 800 of the diversions along the tributaries of the Russian River. The SWRCB records a list of over a list a total over 1,500 water rights filings for the Russian River watershed. The SCWA estimates that the present total diversion demand on the Russian River and its tributaries by all, all users, including agricultural and urban, is 110,000 to 120,000 every year, depending on, um, I'm sorry, acre, foot, yards, depending on the amount of annual rainfall per year. Hey, we can just, I'm sorry. Precipitation in the Russian River is distinctly seasonal. About 80% of the total occurs during the five months November through March. This entails a Mediterranean climate. At those times, the Ru Russian River water enters Mark West Creek, flows into Laguna de Santa Rosa, and spreads over the surrounding lowlands. These lowlands, when inundated, act as a natural detention basin and thereby reduce peak discharges on the lower reaches in the Russian River. Water is also used for invisible, domestic, and industrial purposes, notably in the communities of Ukiah, Cloverdale, Gilsburg, Santa Rosa, and Sebastopol. Evapotranspiration in the irrigated areas accounts for most of the water actually consumed. A review of the flood records for the 23 USGS gauging stations on tributaries of the Russian River and nearby streams reveals that the, that the unit, unit mean annual flood is roughly 100 cubic feet per second uh, square mile for watersheds larger than one square mile. Sonoma Academy is an independent college prep high school located one hour north of San Francisco in Santa Rosa, California. What is a watershed? Watershed is an area that uh, drains into a specific drainage. Do you think you live in a watershed? I do. Everybody lives in a watershed. What is the name of your watershed? I believe it is the Sonoma Watershed. Can you personally have an effect on the Russian River? Stuff that we're either flushing or washing down the drain ends up back into our water system, and it's stuff that, that the treatment plants can't, um, they can't screen for. Are you getting enough information regarding your watershed? I fair not because I read the, um, the sheet I get, you know, I have zero information about Petaluma is one of California's oldest cities with one of the best preserved historic downtown areas on the National Register of Historic Places. The Petaluma River has seen a succession of populations and was once the third most commercially trafficked waterway in California. What is a watershed? That uh, the drains into a, a common river or something like that? Do you think you live in a watershed? I don't know. What is the name of your watershed? Willow. Willow. Can you personally have an effect on the Russian River? By not polluting the waterways? Are you getting enough information regarding your watershed? Nobody sends us anything, but uh, I suppose if we wanted to know, we could find out something from the library. A baseline survey was undertaken by the Russian River Watershed Association to provide an accurate and statistically valid representation of community awareness and opinions in issues related to stormwater pollution. The RRWA developed a questionnaire designed to elicit candid and useful responses regarding residential behavior and knowledge with regard to specific household activities that can affect the health of the Russian River watershed. Additionally, demographic information was obtained for analytical purposes. 57% of the total sample wash their motor vehicles at home, at least occasionally. 61% report that their dog's droppings are always picked up during the walk. 14% say they pick up the droppings usually or sometimes. And 19% rarely or never. An impervious surface is a surface that does not allow fluid to pass through or to absorb. A nationwide road survey in 1904 showed that 93% of the roads in America were unpaved. However, since then, the count of impervious surfaces has greatly increased. Increased area of impervious surfaces covered by parking lots, sidewalks, and buildings can result in increased runoff. The introduction of impervious surfaces not only increases the amount of storm runoff into our watershed, but also decrease, decreases the amount of groundwater recharge. Stormwater runoff occurs when rainfall flows over the ground. Impervious surfaces prevent this runoff from properly soaking into the ground. Thus, an increase of impervious surfaces thereby results in more stormwater runoff entering the county's storm drain system. An increased amount of storm runoff causes both channel enlargement and increased flood peaks. A cause for pollution in relation to impervious surfaces is vegetation removal. 
This causes water to run off slopes faster, increasing both erosion and nitrate levels. The resulting pollution causes damage to fish habitat and populations, as well as impairs water-related recreation and reduces the lifespan of reservoirs by increasing flood damage. Some of the soil disturbing activities include road building, logging, vegetation clearing, overgrazing, mining, and agricultural practices. When the pollutants from stormwater runoff enter a body of water, they affect the health of fish, aquatic insects, clams, and many other aquatic organisms. Stormwater engineers have developed many ways to store runoff and remove some pollutants from runoff, but the truth of the matter is, once stormwater picks up pollutants, it is impossible to remove all of them. Large areas of paving or otherwise impervious surfaces in a watershed can lead to deterioration of the aquatic habitat in areas downstream of local development. Another type of impervious surface-related pollution is non-point source pollution. This is caused from pollutants of varying origins and occurs when runoff carries debris, chemicals, dirt, and other pollutants into our stormwater drain system. Runoff from impervious surfaces in our growing cities and towns is carried off into the creeks instead of sinking down through the porous earth. Impervious land cover has long been characteristic of urban areas, but has only recently emerged as an environmental indicator. Water resource protection at the local level is getting more complicated, largely due to the recognition of non-point source pollution, or polluted runoff, as a major problem. This is now the nation's leading threat to water quality, and is derived from contaminants washed off the surface of the land by stormwater runoff, and carried either directly or indirectly into our waterways. The technical complexities involved with control of this problem are further complicated by regulatory and management considerations. Basically, there are too many impervious surfaces and not enough sedimentation control. This affects us because anything that enters our storm drain system is discharged untreated into the water we use for swimming, fishing, recreation, and drinking. The increase of human population growth is directly correlated to an incre increase of housing developments, impervious surfaces, and human manipulation of natural processes in general. The Russian River Basin is characterized by diversity of land, of land use, including agriculture, urban, rural residential, gravel mining, and light industry. The watershed has undergone significant change since European settlements. Surrounding urbanization will excrete waste through storm drains and other drainage methods into the river that can decrease the water quality, change water temperatures, increase the gravel substrate of the river, and affect migration corridors and migration access. Agriculture around the Russian River has also led to the introduction of invasive and potentially harmful plants into the ecosystem. These changes affect many of the, pop of the eco ecosystem's key species, such as the local salmonoid population. In this picture, the first thing that I noticed was the large amount of housing developments along the left bank of the Russian River. Also very noticeable is the presence of a large gravel mining facility along the right bank of the river. As is clearly shown, there is a lack of wildness or open space along the shores of the Russian River. This is due mainly to the ever-growing need for expansion of housing in urban areas due to the immense population growth in many cities along Highway 101. The riparian corridor, the small strip of land next to the river, is a necessary part of river health because it soaks up the ex excess nitrogen and prevents it from entering the water. With the increasing amount of human invasion into this key part of the health of our watershed, the amount of land devoted to the riparian is decreasing steadily. Each individual can lessen their impact on their watershed by doing things such as washing cars on a non-paved surface, picking up after your dog on walks, being aware of trash disposal, changing oil at home, using fertilizer sparingly, and maintaining runoff from your garden or other water exports from your house.